I'm now for business. We say hello to uh, Kate Moody. Hi, Francois. Uh, global outlooks for growth, uh, they're changing every week, what with the high energy prices we're seeing right now and the, uh, the crunch that's resulting from it. Um, What's the latest from the IMF when it comes to Europe? Well, just a few weeks ago, the International Monetary Fund did trim, as you mentioned, its global outlook for growth this year. But it is a bit more optimistic when it comes to Europe. The latest projections see the European economy expanding 5.5% in 2021, about 5% for the Eurozone. GDP in France and the UK forecast to grow over 6% each, while Germany, which contracted less last year, is set for a more modest recovery. Meanwhile, inflation hit 5% in August compared to a year earlier. It is expected to settle closer to about 4.2% at the end of this year. The IMF sees those price rises dropping below 2% in advanced European economies, uh, but remaining significantly higher for emerging economies going forward. Well, let's speak now to Alfred Kammer, director of the Europe Department at the IMF. Thanks for being with us on France 24. Uh, one of the major concerns in the EU at the moment is inflation, and as part of that, a spike in energy prices. Uh, what's the IMF's prediction on how that's going to play out? Yeah, High, higher inflation is uh, obvious across the uh, European uh, Union. But uh, we expect these uh, in inflation uh, rates to fade out in uh, 2022 because many of these effects are temporary. The uh, rebound in the oil price uh, to pre-crisis levels is one of those. The quintupling of the gas prices uh, should fade out in the second quarter of next year. Natural uh, shortages in supply chain we would expect uh, to uh, also normalize over time. So we are still expecting in the medium term in the euro area an inflation uh, rate below the inflation target uh, set by the uh, ECB. Now, European governments are also trying to phase out their emergency aid, which was brought in during the pandemic. Uh, that's a really delicate balance in protecting households and businesses that are still struggling. It is a delicate balance. Uh, these uh, measures uh, were formidable during the crisis. They protected corporate balance sheets, household balance sheets, disposable income remained stable in the euro area during the crisis. We had uh, uh, excess savings of 9.5% uh, of uh, uh, disposable income, which is helping now in terms of uh, the, the private consumption booth. Next year, we're losing four percentage points of GDP in terms of fiscal support. That is justified because uh, we are winding down emergency lifelines, but it's delicate because we need to maintain uh, targeted support to those uh, sectors which are still suffering, households uh, which are vulnerable, and we need to be careful uh, in, in order not to lose the growth momentum by phasing out fiscal uh, policy too early. So keeping fiscal policy a, a bit more, a bit longer, is better than uh, being uh, uh, too short and, and, and too little. What about France in particular? The government here has spent around 240 billion euros on helping businesses, uh, and that's pushed public debt up to around 116 percent of GDP. Uh, France has been doing what other European countries did as well, a very strong uh, policy support uh, package, 28% uh, of GDP overall. And uh, France is going to maintain uh, a, a substantial support in uh, 2022 in order to uh, make this exit uh, uh, smooth and uh, guarantee uh, an exit with high, high growth rate. We find uh, this is uh, appropriate. Of course, uh, then from 2023 on, uh, we hope that the crisis is over and uh, fiscal consolidation in many of the European countries need to be starting in order to create those fiscal buffers uh, to be ready for the next crisis and to be able to react again forcefully uh, to any crisis. Another major issue is going to be building back the labor market, uh, getting back to full employment across Europe. Uh, hours worked are still 3% uh, uh, below pre-crisis level, so there's still a lot of slack in the labor market, much uh, uh, complicated by that this is uh, going to be a very sectoral specific issue. We will have uh, declining sectors where we have mostly low-skilled uh, uh, workers in there. Uh, we will have increased demand for labor in uh, IT communications in high skilled sectors, 1% of employment uh, we expect to increase there. How to transfer low skilled workers to these sectors, that will be, need to be the focus of policies in, in order to facilitate that, that would reduce scarring, but difficult to do because you need to upskill, you need to train, 
uh, to make these ready, uh, uh, workers ready for this uh, move. Just briefly, the EU has also begun distributing money from its 800 billion euro recovery fund. Uh, do you think that money is being directed to the right areas? Yes, it has. Uh, first of all, it is uh, directed to those countries most in need. Uh, those have uh, uh, experienced the biggest shock uh, from, from the pandemic. That's an important part of, of the equation. It is a, a transfer in addition to loans. That is a second important part of the equation. And it's going to focus on uh, green investments, uh, the digitalization. Uh, these are transformative policies which need to be implemented combined with structural reform measures uh, uh, during uh, this transformation. And that will help to improve productivity and that will help uh, to increase growth in, in the medium term. All important things for Europe. All right, Alfred Kammer from the International Monetary Fund, thanks so much for joining us on France 24 today.